everybody. It's Nicole Bonner with Thriving in Chiropractic Podcast, and I'm here with my good friend, Dr. Colton O'Brien. Hey, Colton. Hey, what's going on? Good to be here. It's an amazing day here at Thriving in Chiropractic because we have one of, actually one of my favorite people, um, Sarah Shapiro. Hey, Sarah. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Oh, girl, I, you're not as excited as I am because I miss her so much. And I'm so glad that we get to spend some time together um, today and sharing with the folks that watch our podcast and our audience. You just started a company called Unleash Your Tiger. Yes, I did. I almost wanted to roar after that. <laughs> you can. I will not hold you back from that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell, tell us a little bit about your company. What motivated you to, um, to to start this company? And tell us a little bit about who you are. I know who you are. And I love and appreciate you for that. But share um, who you are with our audience, what you've been doing for the last, oh, I don't know, your entire life, basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what motivated me to start this company was I've always had a big passion for helping people. And I just wasn't sure in the way that that would show up or how I would do that. So I actually worked for my dad, who is a chiropractor in Atlanta, Georgia, and I worked for him for almost five years. And I did pretty much every kind of job you could do there. Some jobs I did really well in and some I did not. And I tried to figure out, you know, which were my strengths and what I enjoyed. And one of the things that I took on as a responsibility and the practice was hiring. And I realized through hiring that there are so many challenges, especially if you're adding that on to what is already your job. So I already had my my actual day-to-day job, and then I took on hiring as well. And it became challenging because that was basically t- two full-time jobs. And But I really enjoyed uh, the hiring aspect. And I also wished that I could help candidates along the way. So I'm going to figure out how to do that at some point. But I really enjoyed it because it made us at the office like figure out what our standards were in the practice and keep up with that. So that way it wasn't a question of, do I like this person or like an emotional decision? It was more like, these are our standards and we have to uphold these so that we can deliver the best care to our patients. And because of that, it, it allowed me to create an amazing system of hiring in his practice. And I'm not working there full time anymore. I do help out and um, do side projects, but they've taken this hiring system and still use that to this day. And it's streamlined so many things in their office. So once I started working on my own business, um, I, I realized that this is something I'm very passionate about doing. And I also really enjoy it. And I also saw such a need for specifically healthcare companies and small businesses who can't either afford to, or don't want to hire a full-time, um, person for their practice to do either hiring or recruiting. And so I saw this need because I've also been to other doctor's offices where you walk in and there's no one there to really greet you and you don't feel welcome. You feel like you're just a number there. And that a lot of that has to do with the people who are on the team. And so my passion came from people are showing up at these practices and want to get help and want to be better. And we need the right people in place to help them have that incredible experience. So I became very passionate about that. And that's how I started uh, my company, Unleash Your Tiger. And it's been amazing to be able to help people fill up their team so that they're able to have full confidence that they're going to make the biggest impact they can make and help as many people as possible. Phenomenal. Yeah. It's really cool. So Sarah, a lot of the people that are, that watch our podcast are um, either newer doctors or doctors who are just opening their practices or, or maybe doctors like, like Colton, who's are within their first year of chiropractic practice. How important is it for these doctors to, to even have a team? I know a lot of doctors want to try to go staffless. I'm not a, I'm not a fan of not having a team. Even if it's a team of one, I'm really not a fan of not having a team. Talk to us about the importance of that. Yeah, absolutely. So the team, from being in a chiropractic office, the team, I'm sorry, doctors, was one of the most important parts of it. The doctor, yes, is helping with the healing and really facilitating that. But you don't want to add 
all these stresses onto your day of all these tasks that you need to do. You want your team to be there to support you. Yes, you are the leader, but you want an incredible team to help give patients an incredible experience. And if every day you're having to call patients up and schedule and do this and that, you're not going to be able to focus as much on the patients who are in the office and be able to give them the best possible treatment. And so because of that, you want to have an amazing team to support you. And what's also really important is if you start off just by yourself, even for a year or two, it's going to be very hard for you to want to hire somebody later on and want to give up some of your things that you're doing because you feel that they're very important. I've heard this from a lot of chiropractors and doctors. This is so important. I have to do this. And in reality, that's not really true. The main thing, it depends what state you live in, but the main thing you really have to do is adjust. Um, there's a lot of things that other people can do to help you. And the ultimate goal of why you became a chiropractor probably is to help as many people as possible, change the way healthcare is viewed in America or wherever you live. And how you're going to do that is not by yourself. The best way to do that is with a powerful team. And you only can treat a certain number of people by yourself with your own two hands. So the more people you have helping you, the more people you're able to impact and really work towards your purpose of why you even started to be a chiropractor to begin with. Awesome. Yeah. Colin, do you have any questions for Sarah? Or Because I don't want to railroad it. <laughs> no, I'm just, it's just kind of, you know, everything you're saying is so true. And it's kind of like me staring, you know, myself seven months ago in the mirror. Um, Dr. Nicole talked, from the beginning in our coaching about hiring as soon as you, as soon as you start. And I'm, I'm seven months in maybe eight months now, I'm trying to think. Um, and it's just me in the office and I'm, I'm doing everything and it's a lot of work, you know, and you know, my favorite part of the day, I mean, I love the entrepreneurial side, um, big picture vision stuff. And I, I love just being with my people and, and, and adjusting the practice members, but there's some, there's some things that like, I would love to, to pass on to empower someone else to take over in the office. And um, yeah, I'm excited to kind of get the ball rolling on that here soon. So it's cool to have this conversation. It kind of seems like perfect timing. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's really exciting because when you bring people into your practice, yes, you're helping your patients every day, but when you're able to empower your team members, that's, honestly, an even bigger reward because the amount of people that they're able to touch in their circles is so much greater than just the people who come into your four walls. So you're going to have a lot of satisfaction from really helping your team members grow as well. So it's you, you benefit pretty much in every single way from doing that. So I'm excited for you. I do have a question. Thank you. I, I have a question as far as um, maybe a little untraditional. Un, uh, so currently I'm, I'm expand into a new space but right now I'm in, in a pretty small space where I don't really have room for another person in the office so it'd be just kind of crammed and potentially like awkward um do you have do you have any experience or have you had anyone do like a um virtual or someone that does some some things on the side that's not necessarily in the office some of the back end stuff Yes, absolutely. So I'll just give you an example from my dad's office because I'm still doing some things to work with him. He has um, he has virtual assistants. He has multiple virtual assistants working for him, doing all sorts of things, day-to-day um, -day stuff in the office, anything that really he can pass off. And that was a big eye-opening moment for him because like I said, a lot of chiropractors feel like I need to do this. This is my, this is my job. But since he's been able to pass off things to other people where they can thrive doing those things. And then he can spend more time doing the things that he excels at. Um, it's taken a lot off of his plate and it has allowed him to spend more time focusing on future things. Like you talked about being an entrepreneur and wanting to, um, you have, you have big plans. There's things that you want to do and you, it's going to be hard to do that when you have, you know, when you have all the responsibilities on your shoulders. So yes, a hundred percent, you can hire, um, you can hire multiple virtual assistants to do all kinds of things for you. And it's actually better if they're not in the office, especially if they don't need to be. Now, it also is good to have somebody at the front desk to be able to greet patients. That is really important. Um, and I'm sure there's a way somehow probably to figure out a uh, room for another person. But in terms of things that don't need to be done in the office, um, that is a really very smart move to do is hire somebody uh, virtually. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. And also, by the way, they don't have to have worked for a chiropractor before or done those exact things. Um, if you find someone who wants to help and that's, that's their, um, you know, that's what they're passionate about, then you can teach them any of the things they need to learn. 
Cool. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah, to add what you said about that, um, I have I have a woman that's been with me now over a year. I, I've actually done this twice. I have one woman now that's been with me over a year, you guys, and she's our administrative director of our office. And she literally runs our office from Chicago. And that's you know, awesome. I practice in New Jersey. And then um, years ago, I had a woman who did all of our financial, administrative financial stuff. Like she reconciled patient accounts. She created financial care plans, insurance verifications, like everything that a financial CA would do. She did it from Florida and she was with me eight and a half years. That's incredible. Wow. <laughs> most mm -hmm. people, most people do not stick with a job for eight and a half years. So that's very impressive, especially with her not being there. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's great. Like Sarah, like Sarah said, you know, it's awesome. Um, so I've been dying to ask you this question for a couple of weeks now. What is your favorite interview question to ask a potential candidate? Okay. So this is going to seem like a very basic question, but it's really important to pay attention to what the, like the answers to look out for. So it's not so much the question. It's really how they answer it. So first thing, any question that has the word why in it is going to be really important. So you don't exactly, I know uh, I've learned this also from you, Dr. Nicole, which is that it doesn't really matter what people say. It matters why they do things. It matters why they say it, the why they do things and why they say things the way they do. So um, anything that has the word why, but the, my favorite question that has the word why is why do you want to work here? And I know that sounds so basic and that's probably on most people's interview questions, but that question has told me the most about all my candidates and all the years I've been interviewing. And what you want to look out for in that question is if you say, why do you want to work here? Or why are you interested in working here? Most people's answers are going to be self-serving. Most people are going to say either I want to have something else on my resume. I want to, um, I want to gain skills and that could, that could benefit you too, but their focus coming in needs to be helping your practice. Um, they also could say, I really am interested in getting into the healthcare field. That's still, that's still a self-serving answer. So you want to look out for answers that are, um, I really want to help impact the community in a greater way. I really want to help grow the practice because I've done research and I love the mission that you guys are on. Something like that. So you want to look for what the, what they're saying and like the reasoning behind it. That's really important. That's awesome. I, I got. Can I share with you guys actually a funny story that my good friend just just told me just last night? Can I share yes. this with you? Yes. This please. is like. It's so weird how like sometimes like things happen in these sequences, but just last night I was having a conversation with a very good friend of mine. Sorry, you know him. I'm not going to tell you who he is, um, <laughs> but I had sent him over. He's been looking for an associate doctor for his practice. And I sent him over a candidate that I thought would be a really good candidate for him, a really good match. And, and I messaged him last night and said, Hey, how did it go with so-and-so? And he just wrote back, LOL. So I was like, so I call him. I'm like, what do you mean? LOL. What was so funny? He goes, I only asked him one question. And he goes, I dismissed him. I go, you only asked one question in the whole interview. And he goes, yeah, I asked him one question. I go, what question did you possibly ask him that Nick, that nixed him right from, right from being able to work in your office? He goes, well, I asked him why he wanted to work in the office. And I was like, all right, well, that's a great question. I go, what did he say? He goes, well, what he told me was that he wanted to associate in my office for a couple of years before opening his own practice so that he can learn what he, so that he can learn how to run a practice and make his mistakes in my office. That's crazy and, <laughs> to say and, that. And so my friend goes, well, let me ask you a question. What you're telling me is you want to come into my office, make a bunch of mistakes, run my office down so that you can go and open your own office. And he was like, yeah. <laughs> and my friend was like, that's, this is the end. This is like our interview is done. We I wish you the best of luck. And that's a true story that just happened last night. So you're right. That question is a really powerful question. It's so wild. See, answers like that make me want to be able to help candidates, but it's not so much skills with interviewing. It's more their mindset and their focus. So eventually I'll get to that, but it is a really big issue. I, I've seen the most crazy uh, candidate stories and it's just, it's mind boggling. And I don't know why I'm still surprised <laughs> when things like that happen, but um, it's, it's unfortunate because they could be missing out on such an incredible experience, but they're, because their focus is just in the wrong spot. Yeah. 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 It is. 
And, and you know, I hope I hope there are some other chiropractors out there that are, are looking for associates because associate positions. Because I I also see it not just with CAs, but like yeah. I, I feel like chiropractors they need to learn how to interview. I can I share a funny story? Sure, absolutely. Okay, I interviewed a, a chiropractor one time, and he showed up to the Zoom interview in a um white see through tank top. He was laying on his bed back. He had his arm up like this. His hair was not, he had a very long non brushed hair. He was laying on his bed with pillows around him. And it was just before I even asked a question, I already knew I'm like, this is not going to go well. And then after I rejected him, he said, he asked me, and there were many other issues, by the way, he, he asked me, why did I not get the job? And I usually people ask that if it's not an obvious thing. And it was just how, how, how do you, you can look up online, how to dress to an interview and it's not going to say to wear what you were wearing. It's just so odd to me. And, um, so I've seen all sorts of wild, wild things. So hopefully there are some good chiropractors out there looking for, uh, associate positions. <laughs> yeah. Well, that seems like kind of like a red flag. Like we were talking about what are, what are some like other red flags for you? Um, or maybe what's, what's a good red flag for um, potential employees when we're interviewing? What might turn them away from our office so that we can be upright and, and be the place that they want to go, not just for a career, but to create a life in? That's a great question because a lot of times when candidates are interviewing, especially the really good candidates, they're, they are looking for the best, just like you are. And they, a lot of times have more options than we do um, as the people hiring. So um, it's important when when they're looking, first thing, really, really important is to be able to communicate with them quickly. Because if they have an incredible job offer, they're not necessarily going to wait to see what yours is. Even if you have a better work environment, if they have an amazing job offer, they're not gonna wait. Um, so, so communicating quickly is really, really important. And I also would say, having a really good hiring system that is very professional. You don't want it to be where somebody walks into the office and you're like, oh, hey, okay, let's do the interview in this room. Okay, let's go here. And okay, let me think of some questions off the top of my head. Like you want to have it systematically laid out all the questions that you're going to ask in the first interview, all the questions you're going to ask in the second interview, the final interview. Um, if you're going to give them a skills test, have it all very clearly laid out. And, and also so that you can answer their questions. If they say, what are the next steps? You don't want to have to come off up with that off the top of your head. So they really do look for a clear communication. They look for um, clear directions too, and quick replies. I think those are really important things. They want to make sure that they're working in a solid environment. Um, so that's really important. And definitely bring them, I'm sure most people do this, but bring them into the office to experience the office too, not just for an interview, but so they can actually see the office um, because you can talk um, positively about an office as much as you want, but when they actually get to experience it and see the patients, um, healing in your office, that speaks volumes. Um, and then you also asked red flags about candidates. I'll give you some of those too. Um, for candidates, some red flags, this is the biggest one, by the way. And this is the one that I've turned almost all candidates away for, which is being late to an interview. And mm -hmm. When I say I turn candidates away, I will not interview them if they are late. And that goes back to setting standards. So if you expect your employees to be on time, and I know right now you don't have employees, but you will soon. And if you expect your employees to be on time, you can't, you cannot interview somebody who shows up late because then that's show, that's saying something to the employees you already have without actually saying something. Um, so I have turned many, many people away who have walked into the office. Even somebody said, and this is where you have to have those standards. So you don't let emotions get involved. Somebody's like, I drove from 45 minutes away. I got stopped at this red light. I took the turn here. I'm like, I hear you. And I appreciate that. I'm really sorry. I cannot move forward with interviewing with you because that is just our standards in our practice. And that's it. So, um, I've turned many people, I won't even waste five minutes of my time interviewing them if they show up late. So being late is a huge red flag. Also, I don't know if you've ever had this Dr. Nicole, which is where some people will say, um, will ask you what to wear to their interview. Have you ever had that? Uh-huh. Okay. I don't like that question because that means that 
they can't really think for themselves and they can't mm-hmm. use their own good judgment. And so mm-hmm. I won't necessarily reject them right away, but that is a red flag strike. And usually when you see that, there are multiple other red flags that show up after that, um, even during the hiring and interviewing process. Um, And another red flag would be them not following directions. You give them specific instructions to do something like, hey, send me three references from uh, employers in the last five years, and they'll send you coworker references. And that's not what you asked for. So I know that's a very specific thing, but you want to make sure that these people can follow directions. So really, you're looking for like them being able to think for themselves and um, them also talking about how they can contribute to your practice. Like all of those things are the the biggest things that are red flags um and what makes me not interview people or not want to interview people <clears throat> yeah one of the things i do sarah it, and i've done this for years and an old 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 mentor of mine who doesn't even mentor anymore he's actually retired now um taught me this is when we do uh our initial if if we do a group interview for our initial interview um, we tell them that we tell them to bring um, a pen and a paper to write on. And if they don't show up with a pen and a paper to write on, um, we we don't even consider them for the position. I like that. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it, it really is testing if they can follow very simple directions. That's awesome. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's especially for like a front desk person or an administrative person. They have to be detailed. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yes. Cool. <laughs> cool. Colton, what would you like, you know, because you don't have a team yet. Um, and I know you're going to get one soon because I know you're killing it um, and blowing this thing called chiropractic out of the water. What, what kind of the questions do you have from your perspective of like never having to hire before? Yeah, well, one, it's just like anything like the, I don't know what I know, don't know quite yet, but it's like, What's what I've been thinking about a lot lately is like where do where do I find this person? Mm-hmm. One like what's like a good I know there's so many different people and so many different people have different skill sets that could be different in, in chiropractic offices, but like what's like a good like population, maybe age group, um, like demographic, um, that you've noticed that like fit well in like the whether it's the office manager or chiropractic assistant role. That's a good question. I will say that there's definitely pros and cons to different age groups and experience levels. Um, it's definitely good to have somebody who has had experience, especially if they're working at the front, um, somebody who has experience working with people in some sort of customer service role. That is a that is a big thing. It doesn't mean they have to have five years of experience, but somebody who has experience with that. But also, if it's somebody who's, you know, who's worked in a front office role for 25 years, they might have very specific ways that they like to do things. And this is the same thing with hiring an associate. If you hire an associate who has been in practice for 30 years and they don't want to own their own practice anymore, but they have their set ways of the ways they like to do things. So there's definitely pros and cons to um, different age groups. I think the biggest thing with looking for the right person is figuring out what your values are as part of your business and making that really clear to them in the job description. Not Mm -hmm. a lot of companies do that. And if they do, they're very vague and they don't speak to people. The more specific you are with looking, yes, you will get less candidates, but you will get a better selection of candidates, which will ultimately waste less of your time. So being very clear about that and also having a really good job ad is important. I've seen a lot of job ads that are overwhelming and I don't know about you, but I like to put myself in the candidate's shoes. And if I'm looking at a job ad that's overwhelming, I'm like, this person is too chaotic. Like they don't know. There's just too much going on. It's overwhelming. So I don't think this is a good position anyway. And that's obviously jumping to conclusions very quickly, but you want something that is um, pleasing to the eye. So you want something bullet points, not too many. You don't need to give too much information. You're not listing every responsibility, but be really clear, concise, And this is just a little tip. I, a lot of people like to put caps. I don't know if Dr. Nicole, you'll agree with me on this, but a lot of people like to put caps in their job descriptions, 
Um, especially if it's something like do not apply if blah, 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 or, um, don't, we're not looking for someone who like, it's a neg negative and it's in caps. And so I would not recommend doing either of the two. I would just put it in positive. Somebody who's going to apply anyway, with you saying like need at least one year of experience. If you say don't apply unless you have one year of experience, they're going to apply either like the, the caps is not going to make them not apply. And the negative part is not going to make them not apply. And you'll know very quickly if they're not a good candidate. So keep it, you want to keep it how like the energy of your office, you want to keep it upbeat. You want to keep it positive and that you're seeking a very specific person and make that clear in the job ad. And I think that will attract the right person to you. Awesome. Very yeah. cool. Excellent. Well, Sarah, one of the things um, before we, before we end our podcast, I, what I'd like you to do is if you wouldn't mind is share a little bit about a little bit more about your business. Like We'll obviously get contact information out to um, our audience so that they can connect with you um, because our group of people, our audience, you know, they're just right at that, they're right at that timeline where they do need to hire a team. Um, hiring can be very confusing. Um, you're absolutely right. Hiring can be very frustrating if you don't have the right tools and systems in place. It can also be very frustrating if you don't have the right person in place. So you created this business to help chiro chiropractors um, and healthcare professionals streamline that whole process. So tell us a little bit about that before we end our podcast. Yeah, sure. Um, so I have basically set up a system that is going to be the most effective and um, time-saving system with the interviewing process. I've tried many, many different things, doing group interviews, doing one-on-one, -on -one, doing in-office interviews. And my biggest focus is to, and our specialty and what we specialize in is helping, um, hi basically helping hire outstanding CAs and uh, other healthcare workers um, for small healthcare businesses, because that's something I'm very, very passionate about. And so Unleash Your Tiger is my company name, but it also is a core belief that I have in my company. And basically it encapsulates everything that we try to do, which is um, basically um, unlock people's potential and help people really build resilience to what they're doing and um, and have the confidence and strength to be able to build an amazing team and go out and help people. So we do that by stepping in and basically working as if we're part of your team, instead of hiring like a recruiter, we're similar to a recruiter, but we work as part of your team, an extension of your team. So that way it's us working with you. A lot of recruiters work basically with candidates and try to place them, but we work with the client or the chiropractor to help find the best CA for them and then, and then um, vet them and then place them. So our job is to vet people for you. We don't help candidates with interviewing. We don't help them with any aspect of that. Our biggest job is just to help um, fill positions in chiropractic offices with outstanding CAs. And since I've worked in a chiropractic practice and that was my job and I was working for my dad, so I had some extra pressure there, I, um, I realized that there's no bending on what the standards are. So we figure out what the company and the business's standards are. And everybody has different ones. And we can even work with you to figure out what that is, figure out what the standards are. And then based on those standards, we will interview and find the best person to fill that position so that you can continue to grow and help people. So that has really been our focus and um, my passion. So sorry, you do the initial interviews with the candidates and then you give them over to the docs for like the final interview? Yes. Yeah, so we have um, three different rounds of interviewing and we also have resume review and we also have pre-qualification questions. So there's a lot of different pieces to it. They have to get through a lot of barriers before they go into the office for the final interview. So we save the doctor a tremendous amount of time because we'll vet them through like four different steps before they can even go into the office. And once they get past there, then they'll go into the office for a final interview. And what's good about that is it gives the doctor a say and hey, you know, even if I like the person, if that doesn't match well with you and you don't even have to give a reason, it's like, hey, this person didn't really seem to vibe. Okay, great. I'll find you another one. Um, so then it gives you the ability and freedom to pick who you want, even if I've vetted people all the way through. And then, and then we even handle give, uh, you know, giving over the offer. You'll just tell us what the offer is. And we handle getting, doing that, getting the offer letter signed. And then you take it from there with the onboarding. Cool. Yeah. 
I also have, by the way, I do have some resources on my website. I have blogs um, that can help too, that people can check out. So if you go to unleashyourtiger.com and go to the blog section, you can, uh, I, I wrote up a bunch of blogs about hiring things to avoid what you want to do um, and the best practices. So I've done that. Yeah. That's friggin' helpful. Yeah, I hope so. That's my, <laughs> that's my goal. <laughs> That is my goal. And also if people do are interested in talking to me about their business, anybody is welcome to schedule a free consult also on my website. So I'm happy to go over stuff with you, you know, figure out where you're struggling. And if it's just me giving you advice for those 15 minutes, that's great. If it's um, us figuring out if there's a way that I can help you, then that's great too. It's ultimately about what's going to help you best. And it has to be a match on both the client and my side as well. Um, so I make sure that I get this right, Sarah, w one more time. It's www.unleashyourtiger.com. Yep, yep. Unleash your tiger. I just want to make sure that I get this right. That I yep. get this right. Because guys, call Sarah. I've known Sarah. Sarah, how long have we known each other? Like, I don't know, eight years, maybe. Yeah, at, le more. at least eight years at least eight years, maybe almost 10 years. Yeah. I've known Sarah for a very long time. I feel like, I feel like I've grown up with Sarah. I know I've known her since she's been young and now she's this awesome, beautiful woman. And guys, she has a passion and a heart to serve you and to serve chiropractic and to serve humanity. So please reach out to Sarah, give her a call, let her help you because I know her family and she's been doing this for her family's practice for a long time. She knows what she's doing. And I also will say thank you, Dr. Nicole. I also will say that Dr. Nicole has been a big part of helping me get to where I am today. And she's she's a tough one, but she's awesome. And so <laughs> <laughs> all of your feedback throughout the years has been extremely helpful. So I really appreciate you. Of course, Sarah. It's my pleasure. And thank you for that. Of course. All right, guys. Well, we are going to wrap up another episode of Thriving in Chiropractic podcast. And um Colt and I, Colton and I will see you, I guess, next week, right, Colt? That's right. See y'all next week, guys. All right. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>